Hi, this is Marcus from Marps Lab. Today we are going to build a lab on a chip. The term refers to a microfluidic system that accommodates the entire functionality of a macroscopic laboratory on a substrate about the size of a credit card, for example made of glass or plastic. This technology allows the smallest quantities of a liquid to be analyzed completely and automatically on a single chip. The microfluidic device itself consists of three laser cut 3mm thick acrylic glass plates. I designed them in Inkscape, a freeware 2D vector drawing program. Since I don't own a laser cutter, I had the parts made by an online service. The quality of the acrylic glass that they are using is amazing. It even withstands ethanol and isopropanol. I use a special acrylic glass adhesive. It only bonds acrylic glass and is activated by UV light. This allows corrections to be made before the final bonding. If you don't need an optical pass through the device, you can also just sandwich two laser engraved blades together. This allows much finer channels. Remember, always work as cleanly and precisely as possible, because the entropy of the universe fights back all the time. Off camera I prepared three stainless steel tubes 3 by 2 by 15 mm. I use common UV curing resin to glue in the stainless steel tubes. Moment of truth. Is the microfluidic device airtight and therefore waterproof? Apparently not. After a little rework, everything is fine.
the chip is basically just a PCB with a TCS34725 RGB color sensor with an infrared filter and a GCT connector to communicate with a microcontroller via I2C. Next we are moving on to the sampling bottles, but why the heck are they so expensive? Fortunately they are easy to make. I use cheap 50 ml amber glass wide neck bottles with screw caps. After drilling the corresponding holes into the caps I glue two small stainless steel tubes into each. I then poured some two component silicone into the caps as a new ceiling. Then some silicone tubing. and a cheap one-way valve from the aquarium supply store. The next thing we need is a pump. I decided on a syringe pump, which I designed in CAD. I am using a cheap 12 volts linear actuator with a 100 mm stroke, a sliding pot as position feedback and a mini linear guide. The syringe itself has a volume of 30 ml. 10 3D printed parts are needed for the mechanical structure plus a 6 by 300 by 160 mm Delrin base plate. I use a L298N motor driver breakout. These are super cheap and more than adequate for the application. Since I want to be able to use the syringe pump as a standalone device, I have also designed a programmable pump controller.
Now that all the hardware is ready, we can move on to the wetware, commonly known as chemistry. I have opted for the biochemical detection of glucose. For this we use the enzyme glucose oxidase and colorimetry. First we prepare a suspension from 0.5 gram starch and 35 milliliter distilled water. A solution of 0.8 grams potassium iodide and 100 milliliter distilled water is then prepared. After the potassium iodide solution has been brought to the boil, the starch suspension is added. It's then allowed to boil for a few more minutes. While the potassium iodate starch solution cools down to room temperature, 0.15 grams of glucose oxidase is weighed into a beaker. The glucose oxidase is then dissolved in the potassium iodide starch solution, which completes the glucose reagent. The glucose reagent is filled into one of the sampling bottles. Now some glucose solution is prepared and filled into the second sampling bottle. The raw RGB values of the color sensor are shown on the small OLED display for demonstration purposes. Here you can see the reaction in time lapse. Normally it takes about 5 minutes for the reagent to turn blue if glucose is present. In the presence of an oxidizing agent, such as peroxide or chlorine, the iodide in the potassium iodide starch solution is converted into iodine, which then binds to the starch molecules in the solution and forms a blue to violet color. The RGB values have also changed accordingly. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Stay true, stay you.